Hello. So today the topic of discussion is going to be unusual options activity. And I'm going to show you a number of ways to uh, scan for unusual options activity and also uh, what we can do or what, what to look for and possibly what not to look for. So anyway, let's get started. Uh, to start off to scan for unusual options activity, it's real easy. You can just go to your watch list and this is already built into Thinkorswim. Go to top 10 top 10 sizzling stocks and that's what we see right here and we're going to customize this a little bit we want to type in sizzle and we want to add the call the put and the sizzle index and then we're going to get rid of some of these others just to clean this up a little bit okay so the the call and the put and the sizzle index is basically just the the multiple of options that have been traded so on this stock right here uh, 384 times the normal average is being traded today in the calls and 767 times the normal average in the puts so if we look here it also shows it call and put sizzle 384 and 767 uh, it's trading at 500 times usual option volume for today and we can see 13,000 calls 11,000 puts uh, but this is basically just the standard um, sizzle scan built into thinkorswim and you know like I say that's real easy to get into um, another couple of things you can do is you can go into the scan query here and if we open it up load scan top 10 top 10 sizzling stocks and this is what it's scanning for right here minimum price five uh, five dollars a share uh, volume over a hundred thousand and market cap 35 million and sorted by sizzle index we can also create our own scans and I can show you how to do that we can just add a filter for a stock we can look for call sizzle we'll add another we can do put sizzle. So if we do two on the calls minimum and do max of let's say 0.5, this is going to give us mainly stocks that are primarily trading a lot of calls today with very few puts. And we can see that right here, the calls. 20 and 30 times the puts uh, hardly nothing has been traded and we can ATRC we'll look at that and right there we can see 85 calls 10 puts the problem here is is there's just not really enough being traded here so what we could do is go back to our scan and let's do an option filter and we'll do volume Let's do a thousand. See if that brings anything up. Okay, so let's look at this top one, BAX. Now we have sixteen hundred calls traded and eleven puts traded. So if that's if you want to find just calls or puts being traded, um, that's that's what you could do. If you want to look nothing but puts, you could just put two right here and then on the calls. You know, we could do, let's, we'll just do that. And so it brings up, now we have, you know, a lot of puts are being traded and no calls. Um, and one thing we need to do is we need to, increase this higher from from 10 to show more so that's how you can create a, a custom scan and you know if you want to add like say a minimum or a maximum price you can do that as well we can just go to stock we'll say two dollars To 
ten dollars. So now we have stocks from two to ten dollars. So that's that's how you can create a custom scan. Um, another scan that I like to do is just uh, option volume. That's real easy to do as well. And I'll do a large amount to see where all of the where a lot of contracts are being traded. Let's do stock and options. So now we can see these contracts here have all traded, you know, 87,000 contracts traded in this one strike loan. And we can sort that. So this is the top contract traded so far today, 94,000. So that's that's another scan that I like to use, and it's actually right here. I believe it's set. It's actually probably this exact one. So once once you've done the scan and, and you're you know what you want to look for or or let's say you don't know what you're going to look for. Uh, we'll go through these sizzling stocks first. So we have option statistics right here. 13,000 calls, 11,000 puts. And then this will show us the largest trades or today's biggest. And then we can also short right here or sort right here. What I like to look for is a lot of calls all traded at the ask or above with very little puts. Um, if it's traded at the bid or the below, that normally means that they were sold. Traded at the ask or above norm normally means they were bought. And then between the market is just the midpoint, and you really don't know what the thought process was. Um, at least if you see ask or, or bid, It'll at least tell you if they bought or sold it. It may give you some of the thought process there, but you, you still really don't know. Even if somebody um, buys a bunch of calls, you know, they could actually be covering a short position. So it's you're not really guaranteed that they're betting on that stock to go up. They may just be um, covering their position in case it goes up. But if we if we look through here, I don't know if we'll be able to find. So see, that's between the market right there. So this, 82% of all these calls have been traded at the ask or above. We might can look at this one. And we can see the largest trade was 314. If we sort by quantity here, we can see it looks like it's all in the 10 call, the probably the March. And here's the March expiration right here. We can see volume 1300. Another thing I like to do is I like to look at the time it was traded, uh, 1027. We can go to a one minute chart and look at 1027. Which is gonna be right here. That's, I like to see more volume normally if, if a lot of calls have been traded, you'll see a gigantic spike in volume on that exact minute time frame. Like I see right here, we can see at 10.03, we have a big spike in volume. Sometimes I'll look at the, the time and see if somebody bought calls then, but I know that's not going to be the case here because the three, 314, the largest purchase was at 10.27. see nothing at 10.03 right here so most likely somebody just bought stock at this moment and it was not a, a large call trade so now that we've done that I've got some some pictures I can show that I've already taken that kind of show more 
uh, other things you can expect to see. So right here, actually, I took this picture yesterday night. Uh, Aflac, we can see 18,000 calls and puts traded. And what I think this person or institution did, they sold the 50 calls and bought the 40 puts. Basically collected a 70 cent credit to do that. And it roughly 18,900, that's just over a million dollar credit to enter this trade. And that's basically a protected collar. Uh, somebody probably owns a lot of shares here and they're probably not expecting the stock to go up much over 50. So if it stays below 50 by May, uh, they'll get to keep the full credit. And if it drops below 40, since they have bought this call, um, it's going to also help um, cover any, any losses if the stock starts to drop. So that's a, a protective collar right there. And I think what they're doing is they're just rolling this from one month to the other. Because if we look at the 19th, 19th of February, which is today, and this being last night, uh, it looks like they closed their February position and then opened up the same type of position in May. It looks like they had the 47 call. They were short it and long the 30 put. And that's why they bought this call back. The put was basically just traded between the market here. Um, and when they close those they opened up these two positions here and if we actually go and look uh, this is the today's expiration we can see they already had 20,000 open interest they basically bought these back and also bought these back here and just rolled their position to the next month this position here looks like Basically, the, somebody is not expecting this stock to go below 30 or above 40. Um, it looks like they sold both the calls and the puts, uh, roughly 20,000 total, and all were traded at the bid or below. So they're expecting this stock to stay in the 30 to 40 price range, and they've collected roughly... I want to say that was about a million dollars of credit. I'm just hoping that the stock will stay in between this 30 and 40 range here. So 40 is going to be close to the all-time high. And then 30 is going to be way down here. And I think they have about two months for that to pan out. Okay, this is Interactive Brokers. And this is normally what I try to look for. Um, this wasn't, everything here wasn't all traded at the ask or above, but a big portion of it was. And when I look through the option chain, and by the way, this was back in November. When I look through the option chain, um, I saw basically just all the calls traded. And if we look at the date here and the time, 1140, we'll see at 1140, we had a huge spike in volume with the green candle. That's just kind of telling me also that they, they were purchased. And like I say, this could have been somebody covering a short position as well. And then this was later on in January, and now that same position, um, they originally bought them for sixty cents, and now they're worth five seventy, uh, between five seventy and six hundred. And actually, if we look today, The 65 calls are going for roughly $1,000 a call, and they, they purchased these for $60 a piece. So they somebody's made a lot of money there. Uh, this was another one I found, ISBC. Uh, we can see that traded at the ask or above, 95% of all of them. And it was all in this September strike right here. 
I'd also noticed that somebody in the June, a couple weeks before, also had purchased a bunch of the 12 and a half calls as well. And this was all on the same day. Um, I, had, I had researched that. And so this was January 24th. I saw this. And then looking at the option time and sales here, you know, at 1229, we had 1200 traded right there as a single block. And then it looks like the rest of them was almost a, a possibly a sweet trade. And then if we go to 1229, we have the huge spike in volume, the green candle right here. And ISBC had uh, shortly after that, on the second, which was roughly about a week and a half later, um, it says that they joined the S&P small cap 600. And if we look at the, the chart for that, that's actually when the price gapped up. So whether or not somebody knew this ahead of time, I don't know, but it's, it is kind of fishy that somebody roughly two weeks before that um, bought those positions, you know, roughly 10,000 on one day and 3,000 the next. Uh, the 10,000 was actually purchased on this day right here. I checked and then the 3,000 I think was right around here. So this is MPLX. It's another one that I'd watched. It hasn't really done anything yet, but it did have basically kind of all over the place here. We we had some calls traded at the ask or above and then half at the bid or below than the other half between the market. But, you know, when you look at the option time and sales right here, the smallest that we had was the this 26 call 925. But we can see this sweep trade right here. Basically, all of them going through all at one time, um, just small blocks. And it's all out in the March expiration. And we can see, you know, there's one of them right there. Um, but then we also have this big red candle right here, too. So, you know, sometimes what you, what you see may not pan out, but this still has another month to go. But anyway, that's uh, that's this is kind of what I look for. Maybe you were able to understand what I'm saying here. I, I, I realize I'm kind of rambling on a little bit, but um, hopefully this was helpful and and maybe you can learn something from it. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.